In this lesson, we're going to learn how to balance redox equations. The term redox is used. It's an abbreviation of reduction slash oxidation. If you look at the photograph on the left, you'll see a picture of a steel bolt. Now, steel is primarily iron, typically more than 90% and often more than 95% iron. Now the surface of this bolt has been cleaned so that it displays its characteristic silver-gray color of the metal iron. Now compare the photograph on the right. This photo shows an orange film on the surface of the bolt which indicates that the surface of the bolt has been rusted or oxidized. The formula for rust is Fe2O3. So to be clear, iron rusts, that is, it's oxidized, when it reacts with oxygen in the air. And here is the chemical equation for the reaction forming iron 3 oxide. Now rusting is a common occurrence and it's a good example of a redox equation. In redox reactions, one chemical is oxidized, in this case iron is oxidized, and another chemical is reduced. In this case, oxygen is reduced. Oxidation and reduction always occur together. One cannot occur without the other. In this reaction, when iron is oxidized, it gains oxygen. Now, this definition of oxidation, gain of oxygen, it is correct in this example, but it's inadequate because many redox reactions do not actually involve oxygen. A better definition will follow, but don't disregard the example of rusting. It's something that we've all observed. It will help you understand and remember the broader definitions. What are the oxidation numbers? of iron and oxygen in the rust equation. Elemental iron has oxidation state 0. In iron 3 oxide, the oxidation state of iron is of course plus 3. Elemental oxygen has the oxidation state of 0. And the oxide in iron 3 oxide is of course minus 2. In this process, notice that the iron loses three electrons. And going from zero to plus three, it must have lost three negative charges, three electrons lost. And a loss of electrons is defined as oxidation. Loss of electrons is oxidation. At the same time, oxygen gains two negative charges, or gains two electrons, as it goes from zero to negative two and a gain of electrons is defined as reduction. So here are the definitions to memorize. A loss of electrons is oxidation. That's Leo. Leo the lion says a gain of electrons is reduction. And that's Ger. So Leo the lion says Ger. Loss of electrons is oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction. In order to do redox chemistry, you must be able to determine which atoms have lost electrons, have been oxidized, and which atoms have gained electrons, have been reduced. And thus, iron has been oxidized by oxygen. So oxygen is an oxidizing agent. And oxygen itself has been reduced by iron, and so iron is said to be a reducing agent. We're next going to look at a set of rules for balancing redox equations by what is called the half-reaction method. We begin by breaking the equation into two half-reactions, one for oxidation and one for reduction. Our second step is to balance all the atoms in each half-reaction other than hydrogen and oxygen. Then we balance oxygen and hydrogen as follows. First we balance the oxygen by adding water, H2O. Next we balance hydrogens by adding H plus. 
and we balance charges by adding sufficient electrons. Now I'm going to stop reading rules here. I'll explain the rest as we go through some examples. This first reaction we'll look at shows bromate reacting with sulfite and this reaction is carried out in acidic solution as indicated by the hydrogen ion situated above the reaction arrow. Our first step is to separate this redox equation into two half reactions, one for oxidation, one for reduction, but we need to figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So let's go ahead and calculate the oxidation numbers of the atoms involved. The bromine in bromite has an oxidation number of plus five, and the bromine in the element, bromine, is of course zero. The sulfur atom in sulfite has an oxidation number of plus four, and in sulfate, sulfur has an oxidation number of plus six. So by looking at the change in oxidation state, we can see that each bromine atom is gaining five negative charges and going from plus five to zero. It must have gained five electrons. And a gain of electrons is described as reduction, GER. At the same time, each sulfur atom in sulfite is losing two electrons, is losing two negative charges, and a loss of electrons is oxidation. So bromate, like oxygen, is an oxidizer, and it's gaining electrons, that is, it's being reduced. And sulfite, like iron, is giving up electrons. It is the reducer, and in the process, it is being oxidized. So there are our two half reactions. Sulfite, oxidized to sulfate. Bromate, reduced to bromine. Now step number two in the process says to balance the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen first. But in this case, sulfur is already balanced, so we move to step 3A, which says balance the oxygen by adding water. I count three oxygens on the left and four on the right, so we're going to add one water to the left-hand side to balance the oxygens. Step 3b says balance the hydrogen by adding H+. I count two hydrogens on the left, none on the right, so we add two H plus to the right-hand side. Step 3c says balance the charges by adding electrons. Here's where you have to be careful. On the left-hand side we have a total of negative two. On the right-hand side is zero. So I'll have to add, add two negative charges on the right-hand side to balance the charges. Now both sides have a charge of negative two. So that takes care of the oxidation half reaction. It is balanced for mass and charge. Next we'll move to the reduction half reaction. And step two says to balance the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen. In this case, bromine is not balanced, so we'll add a coefficient of two in front of the bromate. Step 3a says balance the oxygen with water. We'll add six oxygens to the right because I see six on the left and we'll add them as H2O. Step 3b says balance the hydrogen with H+. I count 12 hydrogens on the right and so we'll add 12 H+, on the left. Now notice here that Oxygen can only be balanced with H2O. Many times I see novices make mistakes here and try to balance oxygen simply by adding O or O2 to a, an equation. Oxygen is not in this reaction. Oxygen is an oxidizer. You cannot add it. The only source of oxygen you have in solution is H2O. Likewise, I've seen students balance hydrogen by adding hydrogen. Monatomic or diatomic H2 can't do that. There is no hydrogen in this reaction. The only source of hydrogen you have in solution is either from water, H2O, but if you add that you'll unbalance the oxygen. The other source is H plus because this is acidic solution. So that's how you balance hydrogen is with H plus. Be careful. 
Our third step here is to balance the charge with electrons. I count a total of plus 10 on the left and nothing on the right, so I'm going to have to add 10 negative charges on the left to make both sides zero. Now that both half reactions are balanced, we're going to multiply these half reactions by appropriate coefficients so that both reactions involve the same number of electrons transferred. To do this, find the lowest common multiple of the electrons transferred. 10 electrons is the lowest common multiple of 2 electrons and 10 electrons. So notice here I have multiplied the oxidation half reaction by 5 to give me a total of 10 electrons lost. And when you do that, you must, of course, multiply by all terms in the equation by 5, not just the electrons. Keep it balanced. Next step is to combine the two half reactions, combining left sides and right sides, and then reducing anything that can be reduced. So here what I've done is taken 5 H2O and 5 sulfite. Let's move to the other left-hand side. I have 10 electrons, 12 hydrogen ions, and 2 bromates. Now let's collect the right-hand sides. 5 sulfates and 5 times 2 is 10 hydrogen ions and 10 electrons, which I've stuffed on the right-hand side, plus bromine and 6H2O. This is now balanced and we're going to reduce and simplify by canceling whatever is common on both sides. Now the number of electrons will always cancel, so you don't actually have to write them in. We've planned them to be equal on both sides. What about hydrogen ion? I see that I've got 10 hydrogen ions on the right and 12 on the left, so if I subtract 10 hydrogen ions from both sides, I'm left with 2 on the left. Likewise with water, I have 6 on the right and 5 on the left. If I subtract 5 from both sides, I'm left with 1 water on the right. So here's the balanced redox equation. This tells me that if I want to stoichiometrically react sulfite with bromate, I would require 5 moles of sulfite to react completely with 2 moles of bromate. Uh, one word here about step 3. Whenever you're balancing any type of chemical equation, it's always best practice to start by balancing the most complicated formula first and leaving the simplest formulas to the end. And that's what we've done here. When we add water to balance oxygen, we're also adding hydrogen, so we unbalance the hydrogen at the same time. We want to do this first. The next step is to balance hydrogen by adding H+. When we add H+, we will balance hydrogen and no other atoms are affected so our mass is balanced but we have changed the charge. So we leave electrons to the very end because they're the simplest. When we add electrons we will balance the charge and nothing else is changed. So again the process is from most complex to least complex and that is always the best way to have success in balancing any chemical equation. Okay our second example permanganate reacts with hydrogen peroxide. Note that this reaction is carried out in basic solution. See the OH minus above the reaction arrow. Let's figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. We'll do it by calculating the oxidation numbers of the atoms involved. The manganese atom in permanganate has oxidation state plus 7 and in manganese 4 oxide it's plus 4. The oxygen atom in peroxide has an oxidation state of negative 1, and of course it's 0 in the element. And from this we can see that each manganese atom is gaining 3 negative charges as it goes from plus 7 to plus 4. That means it's gaining 3 electrons, and a gain of electrons is reduction. At the same time, each oxygen atom in peroxide is losing one negative charge or losing one electron and it goes as it goes from negative one to zero and a loss of electrons is oxidation. So permanganate is gaining electrons just like oxygen did when it reacted with iron. So permanganate is the oxidizer 
and as it gains electrons it's being reduced. At the same time, peroxide is giving up electrons in the same way that the iron metal gave up electrons. As it gives up its electrons, it's being oxidized. It is the reducing agent. Now that we know peroxide is being oxidized, we write that half reaction first and we know that permanganate is being reduced. Let's go ahead and balance the oxidation half reaction. Now step number two says to balance the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen, but of course there are no other atoms here, so we move to step 3A, which says balance the oxygen by adding water. As it turns out, the oxygen is already balanced, so we move to step 3B, which says balance hydrogen with H+. There are two hydrogens on the left, so I'm going to put two H plus on the right to balance hydrogen. Step 3C says balance the charge with electrons. The charge on the left side of the equation is zero. The charge on the right is plus two. I'm going to add two negative charges to the right to make both sides equal zero. Note that electrons are always added to the right side of an oxidation half reaction. Why is that? Well, the definition of oxidation is loss of electrons, so we have to show electrons being lost in the process. If you balance an oxidation half reaction and find that you put electrons on the left, start over. You made a mistake somewhere. Now, if this reaction were taking place in acidic solution, we would be done this half reaction, but notice it's in basic solution, so there are more steps involved. You see, in basic solution, hydrogen ion really doesn't exist. There is none. So what we do is neutralize all of the hydrogen ion by adding an equal number of hydroxide ions. So I'm going to add two hydroxides here to neutralize the two hydrogen ions and make two molecules of water. On the right-hand side, notice 2H plus has become 2H2O because we added two hydroxide ions. Now, as many hydroxides as you add to the one side must be added to the other side at the same time. Otherwise, you have unbalanced the equation we've just balanced. And now we have a balanced equation in basic solution. Let's do the reduction half reaction. Step number two says balance the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen first. Manganese is already balanced. So we move to step 3A. We're going to balance the oxygen with water. There are four oxygens on the left, two on the right, so we're going to add 2H2O to the right and balance the oxygen. Step 3B says balance the hydrogen with H+. Plus. I count four hydrogens on the right, so I'm going to add four H plus on the left. Next step is to balance the charge. Be careful here. Zero charge on the right, minus one and plus four makes a total of plus three on the left. I'm going to have to add three electrons to the left hand side to make both sides have a total charge of zero. Notice Electrons are always added to the left side of a reduction half reaction. This is because the definition of reduction is a gain of electrons. So we have to see the electrons being added into the system or being gained by the permanganate. If they wind up on the right hand side after you balanced it, start over. You made a mistake. Now if this reaction were carried out in acidic solution, we would be done after step 3C, but again, this is in basic solution. Hydrogen ion does not exist in, a, in basic solution, so we're going to add an equal number of hydroxide to neutralize all of the hydrogen ion. We'll add four hydroxides neutralized to make 4H2O, and at the same time, we added four hydroxides to the opposite side to keep the equation balanced. At this point, we can cancel water which occurs on both sides. If I subtract two water from both sides, I'm left with two H2O. Our next step is to multiply both half reactions by the appropriate coefficient so that both reactions involve the same number of electrons transferred. To do this, find the lowest common multiple of the electrons transferred. Notice that six 
is the lowest common multiple of two electrons and three electrons. So what I've done here is multiplied my oxidation half reaction by three to give me six electrons and multiply the reduction half reaction by two to give a six electron gain. Follow with me if you would. Three times two is six hydroxides and three peroxides. Let's pick up the other half of the equation. Two times three is six electrons. Two times two is four water and two permanganate. That takes care of the left hand sides. Let's add the right hand sides. Three oxygen, three times two is six water, three times two is six electrons, two permanganate, and two times four is eight hydroxides. This equation is now balanced and we're going to cancel anything that's common. Again, electrons will always cancel. We have eight hydroxides on the right and two on the left. If we subtract six from both sides, we're left with two hydroxides on the right. I see six waters on the right and four on the left, so if I subtract four from both sides, I'm left with two water molecules on each side. And so we have the stoichiometric ratio of reagents, three moles of peroxide for every two moles of permanganate to produce three moles of oxygen and two moles of manganese four oxide. Here's a third and final example. I chose one that's a little more complicated. This will take two slides to work our way through. Again, our first step is to determine what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. We see the chromium, each chromium atom in dichromate has an oxidation state of plus six and plus three in chromium three. Each carbon in ethane, C2H6, is negative three and each carbon in CO2 is plus four. And so we can see that each chromium atom plus six gains three negative charges, gains three electrons as it goes from plus six to plus three. A gain of electrons is reduction. Chromate is the oxidizer and it's being reduced. At the same time, each carbon atom in ethane is losing seven negative charges as it goes from negative three to plus four. It's losing seven electrons. That's a loss of electrons as oxidation. Ethane is being oxidized. Ethane is our reducing agent. Now that we know what's being oxidized and what's being reduced, we can write down our two half reactions. Let's go ahead and balance these. Step two says balance the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen first. In this case, carbon is not balanced, so we add a coefficient of two in front of CO2. Step three A, balance oxygen with water. I have four oxygens on the right. I will add four H2O on the left. Next, we're going to balance hydrogen with H plus. Now be careful here. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 6 is 14 hydrogen ions. I'm going to add 14 H plus on the right. Charge on the left is 0. Charge on the right is plus 14, so I add 14 electrons. I would be done if this was acidic solution, but it's basic solution, so I need to neutralize all the hydrogen ion by adding an equivalent number of hydroxide ions. I'm going to add 14 hydroxides to both sides making 14 water molecules on the right and leaving us with 14 hydroxide on the left. We can cancel water in this case. Subtracting four waters from each side gives us 10 H2O on the right. Okay, let's balance the reduction half reaction. Step number one says balance the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen first. That would be chromium. We're going to add a two in front of chromium-3. We'll balance the oxygen by adding water. Seven oxygens on the left tells us we have should have seven water on the right. Let's balance the hydrogen. I have 14 hydrogens on the right. Let's put 14 H plus on the left. Next, we'll balance the charges. Be careful again here. Plus six is the total charge on the right, and plus 12 is the total charge on the left. I need to add six negative charges to the left to make both sides have a charge of plus six. 
if this was acidic solution, we'd be finished, but it's not. It's basic solution, so we're going to have to add 14 hydroxides to each side to neutralize the hydrogen ions. And then if we can cancel water, we do so. Again, in this case, I can subtract some water. 7 from each side gives me 7H2O. So there's my two half reactions. I'll carry these to the next screen. So we need to multiply both half reactions by the appropriate coefficients so that both reactions involve the same number of electrons gained and lost. Find the lowest common multiple of the electrons transferred. The lowest common multiple of 14 and 6 is 42. So I'm going to multiply 14 by 3 to give me 42 and 6 by 7 to give me 42 and of course I'll multiply all terms in the equation by those coefficients. I'll combine these two half reactions. 3 ethane plus 3 times 14 is 42 hydroxide. 7 times 7 is 49 H2O and 7 chromate and 7 times 6 is 42 electrons. 3 times 10 is 30 H2O 3 times 2 CO2 is 6 carbon dioxide. 3 times 14 is 42 electrons. 7 times 2 is 14 chromium-3. 7 times 14 is 98 hydroxide ions. When we cancel electrons and hydroxides and water, we're left with the stoichiometric ratio to carry out this reaction. 3 moles of ethane requires 7 moles of chromate for complete reaction. There is a simpler method for balancing redox equations. We've been using the half reaction method. This method I'm going to show you here is called the oxidation number method and we've kind of been doing it almost completely already so I present it here. Using the oxidation numbers, we should be able to calculate the combining ratio. You can see that each bromine atom in bromate is gaining five electrons. We see that each sulfur atom in sulfite has lost two electrons. So ten electrons is the lowest common multiple of two and five. So we could simply say we need two bromates each gaining five electrons to give us ten electrons gained. and We need five sulfites each losing two electrons to give us ten electrons lost. And from that we could write a stoichiometric ratio of two bromates for every five sulfites. Alright, let's apply the oxidation number to the second example we looked at we can see from the oxidation numbers that each permanganate atom is gaining three electrons. Also, each oxygen atom in peroxide is losing one electron, or I could say each hydrogen peroxide molecule, HH2O2, is losing two electrons. And therefore, six is the lowest common multiple of three electrons and two electrons. Therefore, two permanganates, each gaining three electrons, is a total of six electrons gained, and th three peroxide molecules, each losing two electrons, shows there are six electrons lost. From this I could write a stoichiometric reaction ratio of two permanganates for every three peroxides. Alright, let's do the third example. We can see that each chromium atom in dichromate is gaining three electrons. Or we can say that each dichromate ion, each containing two chromium atoms, will be gaining six electrons. Similarly, each carbon in ethane is losing seven electrons. Or I could say each ethane molecule, each C2H6 group, is losing a total of 14 electrons. 
and 42 is the lowest common multiple of 14 and 6. So we can say 7 dichromates times 6 electrons is 42 electrons gained, and 3 athanes times 14 electrons is 42 electrons lost. And from these we can write the stoichiometric ratio is 7 dichromates for th each 3 ethanes. So we've looked at two different methods of balancing redox equations. The half reaction method and the oxidation number method. And I have displayed on screen the balanced equations obtained by each of these methods for the permanganate peroxide reaction. And the question often arises, well, which one's better, which one's easier? I think it's pretty clear to see that the half-reaction method gives us more information about the reaction. Not only does it give us the stoichiometric quantities of oxidant and reducing agent to combine, but it also tells us the relative quantities of either hydrogen ion or hydroxide ion that are either consumed or produced in the reaction. This can be advantageous if you're going to actually carry these out in the lab. In terms of simplicity, the oxidation number method certainly is quicker for simpler reactions, but this is not always the case. I have below here a difficult equation to balance. Put in some oxidation numbers and notice that the oxidation state of carbon in C5H8 pentyne goes from negative 8 fifths up to plus 4 in CO2. So how many electrons are lost? Well, it looks like 4 and 8 fifths electrons. You can appreciate this might be a little tricky to balance by the oxidation number method. So equations like this one are not uncommon in organic chemistry, where carbon may have many and varied fractional oxidation numbers. And although this can be balanced by the oxidation number method, with a bit of mental arithmetic, most students will have more success using the half-reaction method for reactions like these. So I'm going to leave it to you to balance this reaction. I'll just give you the answer. Have fun with it. So I hope that this lesson has been clear, giving you a clear explanation of how to balance redox equations. I trust it will be useful in your chemistry endeavors. And just remember that practice is your best teacher.